versus Virtus Pro. Our bands just shuffled on through real quickly. It's Capitalist and Draskal bringing you this series. We're going to be doing one series here. And uh, I actually don't know who's going to be replacing us afterwards. I think, I think today's a hot Whoever it casters. is, Cap, they're a downgrade. They certainly are. <laughs> I mean, I look at the talent pool here, you know, and I'm just like, none of them reach our level. It's true. At our highest highs, we, we could truly be the best. But uh, it should be a really exciting series, uh, primarily for Hellraisers, because obviously they're not doing so hot in the groups right now. They're, I believe, tied with Cloud9, 1 and 7 currently. The thing to really keep in mind, though, just looking at the, the standings overall, is that Cloud9 have already played against LFY, who haven't dropped a game. They've played against Newbie, OG, and VP. So they've basically taken all the hardest teams of their group, and they've played against them, and that's why they're 1-7. But if you look at Hellraisers, they have yet to play Newbie. Obviously, they're going to be playing VP now. They still have IG later on as well. So this match for them in particular is super important. If you can get even one win off of one of the... the teams in the top or part of the bracket right now, that gives you a really solid chance at avoiding elimination. So this is definite crunch time for Hellraisers. And it looks like they're going to be pulling out the big guns here. They go for an Earthshaker Keeper of the Light strategy. We haven't actually been seeing a, a plethora of Coddles, but I do feel like it's one of those very specific kind of strategy supports that is a, is a beast. If you're able to utilize it in the correct ways, if you're able to utilize it, whether it's a really um, abusing the chakra magic part of it or abusing the fact that you can move some of your allies around the map with the uh, recall. Uh, there are certain elements that are very unique to Keeper of the Light that can give you a huge strategic advantage. I do like Coddle a lot given the kind of everyone's doing a little bit more split pushing type of meta. People are often just on the other side of the map sitting in trees and I think that Keeper of the Light is very good in those types of games because the one hero sitting in a tree can become two. Maybe you get a kill. You can mm -hmm. pull somebody in. You can de-push the wave. It's a hero that's very hard to five-man into. So I, I do agree completely that we might be even seeing more of the hero. The only thing, though, that you have to keep in mind is Night Stalker is first phase ban. And that's, like, one of the, I think, the best, if not, like, the best hero right now against Coddle just because of how easy it is to find him right. when you have the, the ultimate and, obviously, the passive from the Hunter and the Knight being able to scout out those trees. But it should be a, a solid coddle game, I feel, given the opening. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like um, we're talking about the one of the biggest strengths of the Sand King as a support in that he's able to, to split push really heavily for you, and it's hard to kill. And if you do get caught, I mean, it's a support anyway. It, I think it frees up a lot of room for your cores to be able to play more off the map in the jungle or even just on safer parts of the map closer to towers. Um, and you're able to kind of tank the brunt of getting the, the hard farm on the map and, and putting that pressure on the side lane, forcing enemy movement around. Um, and maybe that is kind of their idea of picking up the Keeper of the Light against the Sand King. Um, the interesting thing for me is Virtus Pros actually go for the Shadow Demon um, despite facing into the, the Keeper of the Light. So if they are running the Shadow Demon in some sort of, you know, say Luna strategy or something, it's not going to be that easy just to be able to go and push into towers with these extra illusions because you've got both the blasts as well as the blinding light that are going to keep you at bay. You're going to need a lot of items to tank up those illusions yeah. if, if that's the way that Virtus Pro want to go about it. They've been showing a lot more draft diversity as of late, so I'm not entirely sure what the plan is. Typically, you see Terra Blades obviously banned out. Sometimes you see the, the Luna picks. Anything really with agility, Morphling also in the past has been a hero that we've seen paired with Shadow Demon. I don't know if I want to do it against Keeper of the Light, but yeah. you know you can you can definitely feel that if you get your early Lincolns or something like that, it's definitely possible. The other part is, I'm not sure if that really feels like a, a Ramsey's hero. I know he has a wide hero pull, but I, I like to see him on heroes that can actually influence the map in some way. Right. Like when I, I see him play like stuff like Ursa, he's always very good at finding his timings. They, they play really well around it, but if you pick Ursa, you don't really have much synergy with Shadow Demon. It's kind of just a defensive support at that point. What are some of the cores that you look for from Virtus Pro um, that will be able to deal with the annoying Keeper of the Light? Because he is one of the best heroes against certain cores and just being able to kite them around. I love Jug in this okay. game, especially with the opener that Hellraisers have. It's so hard to kill Jug. Like how do you have to get like a blink silence into, or like a blink echo or something, I think, to even have a chance mm -hmm. at taking him down. It's really hard to contest the Juggernaut's lane. And because it's hard to contest the lane, it frees up your Shadow Demon and Sand King to pretty much do whatever they want during the early game. You know, that's one of the big things that we hit on yesterday when we were casting is, hey, if you have these really stable core heroes that can pretty much be on their own, 
yeah. then you can have your supports just do so much more during the early game. So I, I like Juggernaut in particular. Healing Ward is also fantastic when you're looking at like the spam that Hellraisers have. You got mm -hmm. Fissure, you got Coddle Blast, you have Puck Spells. So having some kind of sustain, I feel, would be really nice. They gotta go for the Faceless Void here now. That doesn't necessarily mean it's our safe lane hero. Could still be off lane. We're seeing a lot of it uh, right now. And it is a, a great lockdown hero. Especially yep. versus the Puck, who's kind of slippery. You know, that Chronosphere. There's no way for Puck to, to be able to deal with it oftentimes. Same goes with the uh, time dilation. Really rough on some of these heroes that have multiple abilities they like to spam in team fights. I would say that Keeper of the Light and Shaker are pretty good against Void. Because the heroes have a tendency to want to stay back. Yeah. They, they don't really group around the other heroes on the team. So when you throw out a Chrono, there's always opportunity for Blinding Light. You can get Mana Leaked, Fissured. Stuff like that. But obviously, VP have a plan. The Faceless Void is something that you can synergize a lot with Epicenter, for example. So there is still great teamfight potential in that. We'll just have to see how they round it out. You know, what kind of heroes are they going to... You feel on Sniper lately? You, you think Sniper is ever a viable hero? I think he's underpicked. Yeah. But at the same time, I kind of get why. He's, he's very, very susceptible to ganks. And I think that a lot of the times when you play Sniper, you, you put a lot of weight on this, oh, well, we'll just defend, you know, because we can sit super far away from our tower, throw shrapnels and stuff, and that feels okay, except sometimes you get trapped too fast and you can never get out of the map again because you're a Sniper and it's really, really easy to kill you. You know what kind of got my mind thinking about it was when you described uh, Silencer as a, as a worse Sniper. He is a worse, to, to like, the right from, the, aspect, from the standpoint right? of just clicking people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... But uh, obviously, this game would be pretty rough. They are going to be going for the Shadow Demon Luna strategy with a Faceless Void offlane. Um, so Luna definitely does synergize somewhat with Faceless Void. She's got some okay range, especially if she does get the Dragonlance. And it's also a free Eclipse setup, um, which is always great. I do like the Luna. It's an obvious pairing, going back to the second pick, Shadow Demon. The other thing, too, is Jug becomes really bad against CK. Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't really spin if he's Phantasm, because he just beats you to death with his illusions. And it's really, really hard to deal with the illusions in of itself with just the Sand King. So they definitely needed some extra AoE clear, if you want to call it that. The Glaive's bouncing later on in the game. If this Luna gets super farmed, which it's Ramsey's, so I assume it will, uh, you will be able to, at the very least, tank up a little bit. And then you have the Chronosphere just to kind of halt that momentum of the Chaos Knight. You know, he pops his ult. That's really, I think, the biggest threat right now that Hellraiser's lineup brings to bear is when that CK has ultimate and they like coil somebody. Mm -hmm. That's when you want the Void to come in. That's when you want the Sand King to come in. So I think that VP have a lot of answers for what Hellraiser's are trying to do right now. You know, one of the, I, another thing I really like about Keep of the Light, he, he brings you something that's um, a little abnormal for a lot of supports. He has got excellent wave clear. Some supports, they just kind of do okay, but Keeper of the Light can actually deal with a full wave very quickly. Um, and that really helps make up when you have cores that don't have any wave clear. And I'm going to point to Chaos Knight here. We've talked to Chaos Knight about uh, him a couple times, and he's just one of those heroes that because he doesn't have much wave clear, he doesn't farm very well, very quickly, so he really needs a strong start in the laning phase, and he needs to be able to go farming heroes, basically. He needs to go kill things. And uh, being able to have a little bit of wave clear from your supports will help that out quite a bit. Not just that, but just feeding in mana, too. Like yeah. that, it, it sounds like obvious, but CK's mana pool is real bad. So you cast like two stuns, and you can do, I think, one reality rift after, and you're just out of mana for the rest of the laning phase. You get double reality rift going on here. It sounds That's a pretty low cooldown already, right? Yeah, think about this, right? You Phantasm, every time you reality rift while your ult is up, you get all the illusions on top of that person. Mm -hmm. So like you reality rift once, and then you hit him, and then he walks away, and you reality rift again, and then you hit him again. <laughs> or maybe you just blow that first person up. And then, yeah, then you get the bonus skill. Okay. All right, a Dark Seer. So we're actually going to be having a Faces Void mid facing up against the Puck if Hellraiser is going to be running mid Puck. Um, and they are going to try and uh, have even bigger Wombo Combo. Vacuum into Chronosphere, into Epicenter and Eclipse. But Lone Druid is going to be the last picker from Hellraiser. They, they are not... No, they're going to be running an it's aggro It's going to be trailing. a 2-1-2, I yeah. think. I think it's going to be Milan in 33, and then it's going to be J4 in Swift Ending. So 33 is playing the Lone Druid. All right. Yeah, I think that VP wanted something that still gave them additional creep c killing capability. Like, sure, the, the vac into the Void, Eclipse, Epicenter, it's crazy team fight without a doubt. But their heroes, the Luna and the Sand King were pretty much their only avenues of pushing waves quickly. 
And they didn't have any hero that carried team fight items either. So yeah. they didn't have like a mech or a pipe carry or anything like that. Against what Hellraisers have, I think you want that more than anything else. And plus, poor man Shield Void, he's not going to suffer in the. Uh, or actually, it's Ramsey's playing on the Void, so I guess it's going to be. Um, maybe du dual lane mid, perhaps? Maybe solo or it Lil kind of stick around yeah. towards that mid lane and help out no one. But either way, both teams. A little bit interesting. Don't typically see the CK Lone Druid combination together. Yeah. Kind of interested to see how it's going to work. We'll have to see as our TPs come out. Hellraiser's already going for their smoke. Virtus Pro going to try and smoke play at bottom lane. Ends up running into J4. So their ward is. Oh, they swapped back. Denied. Oh, they swapped back to. Uh, yeah, no one took no the one void. Again. void. Yeah, they, they were just messing sense. around a bit, I guess. That makes sense. Never hurts just to cause uh, that little extra bit of confusion in your enemy. So 33 is actually going to be playing the uh, safe lane lone druid here backed up by Milan. And they are going to be running kind of an aggro dual lane, possibly even aggro tri lane. Uh, so I'm sure Milan is not going to be locked down to that top lane uh, at all. So he can maybe help out bottom if he wants. The Chaos Knight Keeper of the Light versus a Luna, Sand King, and Shadow Demon. I feel like if they actually have the Earthshaker, they can win this. It's a little bit tough, but I think they, they you know, find the right opportunity for a Reality Rift on a support or something. And I do agree with the sentiment of Hellraisers being able to win the lane, but it's it's really reliant on who they go on. Like, if they get solo, for example, or they maybe catch Ramses in a bad spot, a defensive disruption can almost backfire, right? Because it sets up the fissure, right. so you can get a better block. It just depends on how, like, the chain of initiation goes. But if Lil hits a really good stun, then, you know, all your aggression might be for naught. I think what is more likely to happen is Hellraisers will put a little bit of pressure on the lane. If they decide that it's worth staying down there, they'll probably commit the supports fully. Otherwise, they send someone to, like, try to stack or, you know, try to get a little bit more efficiency out of their early game because they have good heroes for it. Like, Keeper of the Light, if you're not pressuring the lane, you can always jungle. Like, it's not bad. GH, for example, from Team Liquid, he plays super greedy when yeah. he plays this hero. Like, he just ignores his team pretty much and just farms <laughs> Aghanims every time. Hellraisers, uh, they are going to be dodged here. Pasha has run down to the bottom lane with his Darkseer, which is going to be pretty good, especially since uh, he's not going to be too afraid of uh, the Keeper of the Light. Just spam some Ion Shells and Creep Waves. Should be good to go. So our Lone Druid's going to be faced up against the Sand King Luna. He's going to be zoned out to start with, but I'm sure the supports will end up heading up to top lane. I mean, that's the beauty of these sort of these aggro chain lane situations oftentimes, right, is that you can just keep your cores locked in place and move your supports around as necessary. I think the, the biggest thing for VP is just not having the Luna versus the CK. Yeah. That, that matchup is not very fun. Luna is not what I would call a full-fledged range hero. And a lot of the time, you can put yourself in a, a bad spot. But the, the nice thing about having the DS against this dual lane 2 for VP is Pasha is going to be able to push in the lane super hard. And until the Coddle starts getting, you know, a couple more levels, he's not really going to be able to zone out. He hasn't skilled Mana Leak. He went for the Coddle Blast instead. So not having that spell basically means Pasha is going to get whatever he wants. Yeah. And the Chaos Knight is even going to be a bit threatened as the double Ion Shell is going to push him underneath tower. It's going to make it a lot, whole lot harder. Good CS. A little bit of block off here with the Fisher. 33 is going to run around from one side, the bear on the other, see if they can catch Solo, but it's going to have to scare them away. Sand King positions himself. Potentially go on a mid lane. We do have no one sitting at 10 and 1. His poor man shield has done a bit of work blocking the constant harassment of the Puck. Puck is currently still leading in CS, though, 15 and 4. Kind of expected outcome, I feel. Getting a lot of those auto attacks off. Everyone nowadays doing the double null. Oh no, not the courier! No! What a time for a haste rune. Lil managed to pick up the courier and might just actually help him kill Kaiser. Does he get a lucky bash from no one? But Kaiser is going to be able to survive. Forced to use a defensive orb and pop his healing cell. That actually did so much work for the mid lane. That, like, really sucks for Kaiser. Because when you're playing this mid lane, the first couple of levels on Puck. Especially once you hit two, you can play really aggressive, right? Because you have the phase shift, you can dodge a lot of the incoming creep damage or whatever. But losing your courier, when you know that you're going to be, you know, trying to get bottle soon, he's going to have to have someone like bring it out to him. I think. Yeah. Top lane as well. 
disruption and positioning themselves. He actually uh, goes for the scare back on the bear instead of his hero, and that means 33 is just going to get kind of run down. Does manage to healing salve just barely enough to keep himself alive, but they do have the fish. Oh, never mind. Fisher may be off cooldown, but he's Bottom waiting on a clarity. Two. That's going to take a long time. Pasha trying to run at him. Loop de loop around the trees. Managed to kill all the trees so they can reveal him. Two seconds stun. Hits the blast and will manage to get the first blood on swift ending. Very nicely done there. Back over to mid lane. They're going to force Kaiser to use the orb as Lil tried to make a rotation. Catch Kaiser off guard. This man needs a bottle delivery stat. Like, he can't. He doesn't want to sit here with this amount of HP and only mana for one spell. Right. Feels really bad uh, being Puck in a situation. All right, he's just going to be forced to go back to base. That is definitely not what you want, considering he was doing very well in his lane up until this point. And VP pressuring top pretty hard. In the meantime, not really doing it maybe as well as they want to in the bottom. But Pasha's still getting a little bit of CS, and I think that's what matters the most. I like what 33 did there, and uh, he does have the full tri lane against him. But when he was forced back, he had the bear go ahead and uh, tank the creep wave while his hero was healing. Then, as he TP'd forward, he brought the bear back to go ahead and get a little bit of fountain regen. And uh, basically saved himself a lot of grief when it comes to the golden experience. Lil does manage to catch cool. Milan here. It was kind of hanging around make sure that uh, 33 was going to be okay if they tried to go for another disruption combo. But ends up getting caught in the trees. Always the danger of a support. If you want to position yourself you know, behind the enemy team as they're going on your ally, it also leaves you susceptible to getting caught by uh, enemy four position. You're just kind of isolated out. It's one of the biggest strengths I feel of Shadow Demon Luna in particular. Not just the benefit of having disruption illusions, but he ju she just gives your team so much damage by having Lunar Blessing. Right. She has a pretty strong nuke, scales decently, and going for the second point of the Soul Catcher on solo, you're amplifying all that bonus right click damage and the the additional nuke coming in from the Luna. Got to be really careful about how far out of position you are. Looks like they want to go on bottom lane here. Pasha is quite low, but he does see it coming and manages to uh, run himself out of range. Top Meanwhile, again. top lane, 33, they're going to go on him again. He does manage to uh, Savage Roar up the Luna, but it's Solo who's still going to run and right-click 33. He's trying to get through the trees, does manage to get a little bit of distance. The healing salve is up, so now he can actually get the turn. Solo threw down the ward just to be able to kill the healing salve. He's got Solo trapped by the bear, but he can't actually get really close enough to do any right-clicking with it, and the bear may actually just die here. Milan has a Fissure up, tries to throw it down, cancels it, though. They're actually stuck now. They have to kill the creeps <laughs> to be able to make their way out. That was a heavy commitment, but worth it. I mean, they got Ramses the bear. That's 300 gold in the pocket. Yeah, absolutely. And 33 is not going to be feeling comfortable sitting in this lane. He took so much damage. So. Definitely that a weird works. lane. I don't think I've seen, like, this particular level of clowniness so far. No, certainly not. Uh, t what? Huh. Was that? That was definitely Miss Micro. There is no way he intended to CP on the bear. Instead of his hero, uh, no one actually kills Kaiser while we were watching that one. Was that a Chronosphere use? Double yeah. damage and a Chrono, yeah. Oh, that's rough. It's, it's like one of those games where you're seeing a lot of kills happen that you don't necessarily expect. Like, the double damage is something that you really can't anticipate unless you have Vision of the Rune. And unfortunately for Hellraisers, they don't have a Rune Ward right now. Yeah. yeah the, between the haste and the double damage, Runes really have done a lot for Virtus Pro in winning this laning phase. Courier kill and a mid kill. Yeah. Easy peasy. But they're not really that far ahead. You know, we're seeing a lot of kills, but if you look at just the, the farm, you know, Hellraisers are doing a really good job at staying consistent on the CS, so they got the first blood, are down two kills, but the, the lead is negligible. Yeah, it really is. Chaos Knight, top of the board despite facing up against the Darkseer. I guess his high base damage has done wonders for him in uh, last hitting underneath the tower. It's nice to have that bonus Quelling Blade. Yeah, for sure. It's probably one of the, the best changes for someone who plays a core position to have the Quelling Blade be a flat amount of damage in the early game, because that's the point where it's the hardest to see us under the tower. I would really like to see them uh, try and kill no one, especially since no one killed Kaiser earlier. They've got the combination, right? They've got two levels of Waiting Rift. They've got their Coil. They've got the Lockdown available. It's just by himself, Kaiser can't quite do enough damage to kill the Void, so he needs a little extra. And 
I'm not sure exactly where that comes from. Maybe uh, I'm not sure if a Fisher is by itself is going to be enough. Maybe needs to pop the Keeper of the Light. But top lane, they're going to go again. Disruption, Soul Catcher. 33 already down to half HP. But Swift Ending is here. And he managed to get the root on a solo. So Swift Ending is going to take advantage of that position. Managed to finish him up. Lil, meanwhile, Burrow strikes through Milan to be able to pick up the Bounty Rune. And Swift Ending's rotation just kind of saves 33 some grief. Kills the support, but nothing really major game changing for sure. Going back to the ganking the void, it is definitely possible if no one's sitting mid with about half HP. But you also have to be aware of the fact that Chrono is going to be up again soon. So you might just, you, you might be able to force a defensive Chrono, but I think you need at least one or two extra stuns. I would actually like to see Swift Ending being the one moving around like we just saw him TP top. I think he's one of the better heroes that kind of securing those kills, especially once he, once he gets to like 8 or 9, gets 2 more points into that Chaos Bolt, so he gets the the bonus duration. But for now, I think it's it's hard to justify going mid for for no one, just because, again, he does have the Chrono, and your other lanes still need the help. Mm -hmm. So you rotate 3 heroes to kill the Void, and that means that bottom and top are both free farming. Ramses has made the transition towards bottom now. Hold up. Draskal, I didn't realize this. Chaos Bolt is a 10 second cooldown. If you get a 4 second stun, you can actually ch double Chaos Bolt somebody. You can. Chain stun them. Oh, that sounds awful. That sounds like some sort of nightmare. You're actually just forever stunned. <laughs> nice smoke up though from Hellraisers. This is definitely going to be unexpected for British Pro, but they can still can, de can defend against this because Ramses does have the clips. He's going to pop it, but Swift Ending did get a bit lucky with his ultimate, the Phantasm. Pop the extra illusion, which helps them tank up the damage really well. A bro strike through. A lot of damage out. Now the Chronosphere. It actually caused Swift Ending on the side as well. So not just being able to kill Milan, but stalling up Swift Ending's pursuit of Ramses. What a turn from Virtus Pro. Lil stun and that Chrono. My god. That was like the absolute best possible spell usage back to back that you could have possibly hoped for. Like destroying the Chrono and hitting one hero, making sure that the Luna lives is fine in of itself, but managing to get the, the second hero inside, Jesus, that was like a perfect reaction for VP. Man, I, I, I was sure that Virtus Pro would have no idea about that rotation, but the way they kind of played it, you know, they, they didn't have any vision to be able to see the smoke or anything like that, but they just played it right. You know, Ramses is the one in the trees, so when the smoke pops, the Shatter Demon was the one out in the open, and then they had just boom, instant reactions uh, from no one to be able to TP in and get that sexy Chronosphere. I guess in the meantime, they did lose their mid tower, so it's not like a a total net loss for Hellraisers. They get something in return. Yeah. In fact, they, they walk away with a little bit of a net worth advantage, and that was a lot of ultimates expended on the side of VP. So there's no Eclipse, there's no Chrono. Perhaps they take this as an opportunity to get themselves another Tier 1. They're eyeballing the, the Tier 1 in the safe lane. Avertus Pro currently. Ramses is coming over, but at only level 6. All right, they're going to get this Disruption into a little bit of a stun. Bro Strike comes out. They do have a big blast coming in with a Fisher helping him out. Swift Ending tries to turn, but doesn't actually get enough damage to threaten anybody on Virtus Pro. So he does get the tower, but it costs him his life. That is one thing that we should always take note of, is the idea of disruption and how good it is against CK. Yeah. <laughs> like, you get the crit on the illusions as well, and CK is a strength hero. He builds stats. Mm -hmm. So those illusions are going to be absolutely terrifying during the late game. There are some heroes, when you're playing against Shadow Demon, that your illusions just straight up kill you. Like Anti-Mage, for example, your your classic any agility carry, like Morphling, SD. Basically, the heroes that he pairs well with, he also demolishes if they're on the other team. Mm -hmm. That's why, I mean, TI6, Shadow Demon was picked up so often simply because Disruption plus the Purge with such a potent anti-core combination. Milan is going to die here, caught by Solo. It's like he was just trying to chill out here in the bottom lane, try and get himself a little bit of farm, because he's 12 minutes in and he's only level 4, has Tranquil Boots alone, so if he hopes to be able to get a decent Blink Dagger timing, his team has got to find a lane for him to farm in. I don't know if he's going to have the space. That's kind of one of the issues I find with Hellraiser's lineup, is if you want a hero that carries a Blink Dagger to get a Blink, you can't have, like, Keeper of the Light and two very static farming heroes like Lone Druid and Chaos Knight. I think that's one of the big reasons why Swift Ending has been really proactive around the map, is he, he recognizes this, okay, I'm one of the only heroes who really does a lot of damage and offers a, a Disable besides my Puck. And the other heroes kind of need a little bit of farm, so I need to be the one trying to make these plays. And I, I think it's been working out relatively well. But if they stop and they all try to farm simultaneously, there's not enough creeps. Like, you, you, you got to have someone be somewhere else on the map. Yeah. That was uh, interesting. Use Phantasm and is going to uh, 
end up tanking the uh, creeps at top lane. Maybe he's a little bit afraid. Uh, checking out the vision of uh, Hellraisers, he doesn't see a whole lot, so maybe he was a, a bit afraid that there was going to be some sort of rotation uh, to catch him out, so he just uses Phantasm to farm instead. Bottom lane, they do see this setup, though, by Lil as he wraps through the side tree, so Milan should not be caught by this. Right, Milan? Don't get caught by this, my friend. Okay, maybe he is. Burrow Strike is going to be there. And they do have the Eclipse, so they're going to try and run down Milan. The Creep Wave is there, though. The Fisher comes out. The stuns. And Milan just out of range. Lil, he's going to have a hard time chasing into this one, especially his 33 and Swift Ending. Both catch him. The Chronosphere is there now, but they don't really have a whole lot of damage. Maybe 33, though. Oh. He's super squishy. The Mask Man is. They do manage to finish him up, but no one is now silenced up. Kaiser's going to be able to get some control in as well. Nice disruption save by Solo, though. And the Fisher a little bit off in the timing. He does manage to time walk out of there anyway. So, man, they just kill uh, Sand King for the loss of 33, the Lone Druid. Both the Lone Druid and the Chaos Knight really cannot afford these deaths. Their farm will start stalling up too much. That Soul Catcher from the low ground coming in from Solo is huge. I think yeah. that's the only reason they managed to kill 33 inside of the Chrono. It hit the bear and the, the hero, but that's still 15% extra damage, right? It's, yeah. It's really, really big. Especially when you get lucky with those bashes and the, the bonus losing beam coming in from Ramses. So again, solid fight coming in for Virtus Pro. It's another Chrono dropped. I think they're having a really hard time utilizing those timings because Kaiser doesn't have blink yet. Once the puck has blink, they can punish these ultimates being on cooldown a little bit more effectively. Do you um do you think that the Vela Discord first was the wrong item choice and you should have gone Link first? Oh no, I think Veil first is incredible. Yeah. It's just value stats, helps you kill the creep waves. Like there, there's a lot of benefit to having it. And to be honest, he's still gonna have his blink dagger at like 16, 17. Solo is gonna go on to Milan here. TP out, no oh bash. My. Oh Jesus God. Christ, no one. Woo! He is a bash king. That's a take a deep breath and count to ten moment right there. Although, truthfully, he has Mask of Madness. There's a good chance within, like, three hits he would have gotten a bash. Yeah. I don't know, like, exactly how that statistic works, but it's it's a solid chance. We'll say that. No one. Rise. Sits on the high ground, allows Kaiser to walk straight into him. Gets a couple of nice right clicks in. He will be going for that Shadow Blade that we've seen so much of. Mask of Madness Shadow Blade seems a very set item build for Faceless Voice right now. It's just so value. Like, Mask of Madness is a, an incredible item in of itself, but ever since they changed uh, the time lock damage to just be, like, 125 all the time, uh -huh. it, it's just an incredible farming tool because those bashes do add up in increasing your farm, farming speed, and inside of Chronos, you just... You saw how fast 33 died when he had the Soul Catcher on. He just got blasted, so... First reveal of the Blink Dagger Puck is coming up. Hellraisers have a two-man smoke between Milan and Kaiser. They're going up to the top lane, which is currently being pushed in by the Chaos Knight. They're hoping to catch someone, or maybe a couple of someones, on their rotation to defend. They see the Darks here, they see Pasha, but now Pasha sees them. And uh, kind of spoils everything there. I don't think they wanted to jump the DS. That's a hard no, target. Certainly not. And uh, no one. He does have the Chronosphere. He wants to try this one out, and he's going to. He'll take the kill on Milan for sure. Blinding Light kind of slows things down, but... Uh, Milan, there's no way he gets out. I think it's actually very cool that no one drops the Chrono there. Because he knows that, that Hellraisers are, are pretty scared of taking these kind of fights right now. Yeah. Because they don't have the Shaker Blink. And if you're keeping that hero further and further away from getting to the, the Blink Echo Slam point in the game, you're giving yourself a huge leg up. Because you are kind of an illusion-based team. Those illusions can be annoying if you like walk into a tower and you're trying to push Blink Puck and then a Blink Shaker can be very difficult for that kind of a team to fight into. Yeah, you're seeing a gigantic difference in farm between the four positions. Uh, Sand King has a whole Blink Dagger up ahead over our Earthshaker, who's just sitting less less gold in the bank than uh, he had two minutes ago. Only 400 after that death. Uh, this is creating some space for 33 to be able to get his Radiance, though. That certainly helps out a lot. And Swift Ending's been trying to farm up his Echo Saber. He's actually been taking some time out from moving around and trying to force kills um, and actually just focusing on making sure he hits his kind of mid-game timing really well. 
I really can't wait to see the first time the Hellraisers really get all that team fight together, you know? That CK with his uh, his Echo Saber and his arm, like getting the Phantasm out with the Puck Initiation. I think that's probably going to be one of their strongest points prior to, I guess, 33 picking up the Radiance and the, the Shaker getting his own Blink Dagger. But leaving VP to their own devices feels really scary to me. Like, late game Void Luna, even if you have this CK, even if you have a Lone Druid, I feel like the control that VP is going to be able to offer in conjunction with how well their Shadow Demon support is going to scale is terrifying. Like, I don't think you want to take this that late if you're Hellraisers. Yeah. Virtus Pro. All right, got to start pushing out with a smoke deep inside the jungle as uh, Ramses will take that tier one tower. Same thing that Hellraisers were kind of doing. A push from a core matched by a smoke wrap around to see if they can catch anybody. But uh, Hellraisers are definitely dodging Virtus Pro every chance they can get right now, especially 33, who is uh, closing in on that relic. Another smoke up here. Kaiser's going to be in a really good position to spot this out, though. The smoke pops. Kaiser has the Blink Dagger up, gets caught by the Soul Catcher. Face shift, dodge the Burrow Strike, does manage to jump away to the orb, but they have the Chronosphere to catch him after the John. So, Virtus Pro take a big core off the map and will manage to position themselves nicely to push this Tier 1 tower. Uh, that was an unfortunate way to like blink out of the trees because you're basically not putting yourself in the fog. J4 could be in trouble here. Yeah, the Fisher block is there though. Nice time by Milan. Still going to be caught by Lil. And uh, he does have that high hunt shell on him, so it makes it even easier. He's going to go for the Echo Slam here, just trying to stall off these heroes. But one of these supports is definitely dead, and it's going to be Milan. I would almost say I'd rather see the Keeper of the Light die at this point. Swift, and he just comes in and immediately gets blown up. That was very questionable by Hellraisers. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro had a clear idea of what they wanted to do there. They killed that core, they jumped forward to catch the, the Keeper of the Light, who they knew would be defending the tower, and then they just get whatever pickoffs present themselves from Hellraisers. That was very strange for the CK to be standing like right behind the Tier 1 tower, putting himself in a precarious spot, ends up kind of dying for it. Yeah. But that was always worth. No one never hesitates on his Chronos. I think that's probably the the best kind of quality about his Void this game. He's just willing to drop it on whoever he sees. Because he knows as soon as that one hero is out of the fight and a 4v5, if he has his teammates behind him, he has like the mech on uh, Pasha who also now has a Blink Dagger coming out. He's got the Blink Sand King. There's not really any reason to be scared of chronoing one hero when you're, when you're in this position. It's only a 3k net worth lead, but it feels like more than that because of how Hellraisers are always defensively positioning themselves on the map. No one looks for another Chronosphere. Might just find a really beautiful one. His team's a little bit farther away. So maybe uh, not quite yet. He's going to go for the puck by himself with a Mask of Madness. He will take this kill. Dominating spree runs into Swift Denning, gives him a bash, and goes away. Virtus Pro actually going to go for this one. They've slowed him down solo. He managed to get the Purge out with a Soul Catcher. No one's just kind of biding his time, waiting towards the end. Starts going to Swift Ending now, but not really fully committing. He's waiting for Lil to get here. Now gets here with a Blink Burrow Strike. Swift Ending's dropping lower and lower, but he gets off the Phantasm now. Pulls back No one with a two-second stop, but here comes the Epicenter. The AoE damage is just enough to be able to finish off Swift Ending. A three-man Fisher, but that's all Milan can do with the Echo Sam on cooldown. And now they've caught more. Pasha managed to get the vacuum back with a wall on a J4 and 33. They're going to chase down J4 on the side, and 33 gets stalled up by the disruption so he's going to be caught as well probably chased in to the tier three doesn't even make it that far 16 to 4 as Virtus pro are just walloping four hellraisers 5k gold lead and 21 minutes in they are already going high ground to hit the tier three the coordination from hellraisers just doesn't seem to be there they're just getting caught like continuously one by one everyone just out of position it's not even as if Virtus Pro have this crazy vision advantage. They, they have one ward between the towers and the bottom lane, and then they have the one ward in the jungle. I mean, that's pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. It's, it's just the Hellraisers are never really as one conformed unit. It's always just one person gets picked, then they try to fight, then another person dies, and another person dies. Yeah. I swear to God, the Earth Shakers had a GPM of like 30 gold over the last yeah. like six, seven, eight minutes. It's been a, a real big struggle, I think, for Milan this game.
but that's kind of why I was thinking that maybe during the laning stage, Hellraisers may prioritize doing a bit of stacking for their own like support heroes, just so they can try to get a little bit more out of the, the laning phase and get closer to a blink faster, because you can see how tough it is for Hellraisers to take these team fights. That's why no one is happy to just casually drop a Chrono on one hero. He's going to get an Arcane rune here as well. So if they want to take a team fight after that, uh, after the Roshan dies, he can just throw out a Chrono and you know it's going to be cooling down the 30% the faster. Hellraisers, you got to go for uh, a smoke here. They have one in the backpack of Malad. Doesn't look like it. They're just playing grouped up together. I think they're kind of tired of getting picked off so much. So. See if they can put an end to that, but it is creating a lot of space for Virtus Pro to do whatever the hell they want, and that is currently killing Roshan and taking the Aegis. About to finish out the BKB on the face of Void as well as on Ramses. That will be their end game timing, right? I that tower mid has like one hit left, so I would assume, yeah, as soon as those BKBs come out, they're just gonna walk down mid. They might even get it with the illusions. There's four of them just running at the base right now. Yep. Pretty easy. Get a lot of damage on the range racks as well. It's kind of a bummer for Hellraisers because we never really saw their full team fight come to fruition. No. It was always these really kind of scrappy, chaotic situations where they weren't entirely sure if they wanted to engage or they were getting picked off by Chronospheres, getting caught out by Solo or Lil. Virtus Pro knows that Hellraiser's been smoked. After all, they ran four illusions through mid and took the tier three tower without really seeing any heroes. So they've just been kind of playing together. Start backing way to their own side as, uh, as we said, those BKBs are gonna be the perfect timing for Virtus Pro to force Hellraiser's out of this game. And Hellraiser's gotta come up with something special to be able to stop this. And it's gotta be more than just Aghanim's Keeper of the Light. We need the Blink Dagger up on Milan too. We we need some sort of harder form of initiation than just the Puck. I think it would have been okay just to have the Puck earlier in the game. But now I agree that it's, it's gonna require more than just that one form of initiation. You really, really want Milan to have Blink. And I just, I don't really see it in the cards unless VP makes some kind of mistake pushing in. J4 does manage to TP out before Ramses could hit him with the Lucent Beam. Interesting to see that Pasha opts to go for the, the health regen. Oh yeah, instead of the instead of the damage. I mean you look at it and you're punch. like you're like 14 health regen is actually pretty decent. It's yeah. it's a good amount. But you look at 120 damage and you go, but I can farm ancients with this. <laughs> you know? But I guess if your goal is to just go high ground and you're not going to be hitting the tower, then the health regen is objectively better in that Don't case. you hate that as a support? When you go and you successfully find the enemy wards, you lay down a sentry, but you also realize that because those wards are dead there, you're just going to get run down. Yeah, that's a bad feeling. Ramses is just sitting in the base all by himself. His team is behind him, but... He is. Ending. Two seconds stun into a disruption, which just makes Ramses and his boys a little bit more powerful. They are gonna get a uh, couple of nukes in here, but Ramses really isn't losing that much HP, and he still has the ages to be able to work on. Chronosphere on it too. What an excellent initiation, catching Milan, and now the extra damage will go on to Swift Ending with the Epicenter still going out. Swift Ending just can't stop being bashed. He was stun locked from 100 to zero pretty much, and Hellraiser's left with only three heroes to defend. Fortunately, the Tier 2s are up, so Virtus Pro are going to have to back away and take that Tier 2 top lane before they go high ground once again, but it seems like just a small delay in the inevitable death of Hellraisers. Yeah, this is turning into a, a pretty one-sided game. It was fairly close for a while. Hellraisers just really couldn't get the coordination necessary to kind of take it to VP. With As soon as they got their Blink Dagger timing on the puck, you know, it was 16 minutes, he had Veil Blink. That's not a bad timing at all. Yeah. They had the tools necessary to be able to take the fights. They just never found the opportunity. Kaiser here could be in some trouble. Between Sandstorm and Ion Shell and even the Poison, pretty hard for Kaiser to be able to get a quick escape here, but he's going to be able to get over to his orb. Lil chases him, but to no avail. A nice little escape there. At this stage, we're really just looking to see if Milan can, uh, can acquire that mythical Blink Dagger. He's only 600 away. 
And BP are kind of on the other side of the map right now, so he may have more time than he wants to farm. 33 doesn't go for the instant TP uh, because the old scepter is there now. The bear is actually going to start dealing a lot of damage to Lil with the Mask of Madness. He tries to run him down with Radiance Burn. It might have actually been able to catch up, but he doesn't try for it. He does want to lose his Spirit Bear here as it's going to be vacuumed up. Ramsey's doing a lot of physical damage to it, but there goes the Savage Roar. And 33, that is kind of absolutely what his team needed right there, some sort of space. For Milan to be able to farm top, he's getting so close to that blink dagger. Please don't oh, tell he's me no get one. Chrono. No, no one. Don't. Oh, oh. He went the wrong way. All right. Oh, that is so lucky for him. The. Uh, Did he see the shadow blade, or did he just get back on his own? I think he just backed up on his own. Okay. Because I was gonna say, if if you think that the enemy player is backing on their own, they're never gonna juke because they didn't see you. Yeah. Right. So I thought maybe. He did get spotted out there and, and thought that he was going to try to go in the trees or something like that. We haven't really seen them uh, utilize the, the recall mechanic a whole lot. They're really scared. They like they can't send someone to a side lane, even though I think that J4 could still be that hero in this game. Just being the guy sitting across the map, you know, kind of what 33 is doing right now. Yeah. But just putting himself maybe in the, the less safe position than the Lone Truid. But you're under a really big amount of pressure right now. There's a gigantic net worth lead for the side of VP. You know they have the team fight advantage. Right now they're just going in to claim their essentially free gold and map control on this bottom lane. Hey, you're this far ahead, you might as well take the rest of the towers on the map. Just uh, big piggy banks waiting you for you to uh, crack open. 33 will continue his push in the top lane. Here comes the TPs. They are kind of smoked up. Rams is just going to reveal himself. He just wants to stop this push. But Solo is going to be able to run a J4 here. And the TP's on the Shrine should guarantee the J4 end up dying. Even just the Shattered Demon by himself could probably kill J4. The reddest of VP are actually still kind of smoked up. I love these like multiple teams that they're going out and just finding heroes on the side of Hellraiser to kill. Epicenter, not really needed, but he didn't know. It's, it's almost one of those epicenters where it doesn't even matter. Like, yeah. are Hellraiser's going to be able to take a fight with a dead CK, even if Epi's down? It's pretty unlikely. I'm, I'm really happy to see that VP are just always willing to throw the abilities at the enemy team to ensure that they die. Like, it's always better to do that than miscalculate how much you're going to do and then not get a kill. No one does not have the Chronosphere, but he does have a Diffuser Blade. That'll make it pretty easy for him to beat down 33. Now, he doesn't get the Chain Bash, and all that extra movement speed actually plays against him, but VP and uh, both Lil and Solo are here to be able to stall up 33. So he won't be able to make it out. Kaiser actually shows himself. He was hiding in the trees earlier, trying to save his buddy, but nothing doing. 22 to 4 with a 17k gold lead for Virtus Pro. Experience approaching the 20,000 mark as well. And they still haven't even taken that final round of tower. The bottom tier teal is still alive. Virtus Pro have made it a very high priority in continue, continuing to shut down the split pushers. Nice double stun burrow strike coming out from Lil. No one comes in, but he didn't have the Chronosphere, so didn't feel comfortable following that one up. They just forced the buy back out of 33, and we'll call it a day. That's good stuff. More economical damage dealt to the side of Hellraisers. Just kind of slowly chipping away, finding picks, keeping the map control. It's a very clinical game of Dota 2 coming out here from Virtus Pro. Yeah, this is the unrelenting pressure that they're putting on Hellraisers and just kind of stymieing every single one of their plans, every single t uh, attempt to split push, uh, forcing out that buyback. Every single one of these, like, this is the, the kind of plays that I want to see from a team heading into the international main stage, you know? Like, this is the kind of, like, we're going to do everything we can to completely shut you out of the game. Other teams, I think, would have just been like, all right, this game's over, let's just go high ground. But there's a chance at a comeback from the enemy team that way. By you just trying to barrel down high ground and if a fight goes bad, then it's a lot of gold back in the favor of the enemy team. But here, Virtus Pro are just going to make sure they give Hellraiser zero quarter to work with. It's just respect to your opponent, I think, more than anything else. You're at TI. You don't want to drop a game, right? Like Even if you're already in the top half of the bracket, you still don't want to drop a game and just making sure that they do every single thing necessary to ensure victory. Can't blame him for it. Virtus Pro waiting out the next Roshan. It's going to be up really soon here. Still just assuming control of Hellraiser's jungle, looking for potential picks. No one can really cross the river. 
on the side of Hellraisers and feel even remotely safe. Look at no one. He knows. Oh, so close. The Radiant scan is just barely off the mark. And uh, he's not going to be able to find Kaiser. And they actually back up to smoke here. But a lot of heroes. <laughs> Got a lot of aggressive vision. They are going to be able to find Solo. I guess that's something. They'll take anything they can get at this point. That support kill was worth 343 gold. That gives you the kind of net worth discrepancy that Hellraisers are dealing with. The lead is creeping up over time. The longer the game goes and the more map control that Virtus Pro have, it's just going to continue this way. But with the one kill, 33 inside of the pit here with the smoke. This could be a Roshan attempt. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. There is Chronosphere up on no one. I think BP know about this. They're yeah. TPing with Pasha to the middle tier two. All these wards dropping around the Roshan pit from uh, Hellraiser Century. Okay, they know now. They're definitely going to poke an illusion in there, see what's happening. And Hellraisers, they're just going to keep going. <laughs> that half HP, but it's taking you so long to finish up this bad boy. Yeah, they got to get out. This is this is going to be bad. They're still going to try it, but no! Oh, he meant to get a Savage War. Can they pull up the... Oh, he's going to be able to get the Alka Slip, but no! The Vacuum comes in and stops the damage on no one. He does get out the Chronosphere. Disaster strikes as Hellraisers had the fl faintest glimmer of hope to be able to win that engagement off of clutch reactions from 33, but now they're just going to get cleaned up on all sides. Not even 33 is going to be able to make it out as... Uh, oh, nice Savage Roar. He does actually get out. Well placed. That was a nice little juke in the tree there. But unfortunately, this is still going to be Roshan. There's a double damage too. Ramses is saving it for when he can just walk up either top lane or bottom lane if they want to claim the, the last remaining tier 2. I think with that team fight window and knowing that Echo and Phantasm are both down, they probably just walk towards top. No one wants the DD. Ramses is casually hitting some ancient creeps here. <laughs> he's not okay, even now close to an item. Now he's going to get it, right? Okay. Well, Ramsey, where are you going? Saving that DD for a rainy day. I guess so. They're going to get all the lanes pushed in as best they can before he picks up that DD and heads to top lane, I guess. Just trying to be more efficient. Getting more net worth. I mean, the, even just that one engagement around Roshan and, and taking the Aegis and the, the Cheese is still another 5k net worth that they've piled up in the lead. Okay, there we go. He finally picks it up. He's going to be walking towards that top lane. 24,000 gold lead. It's very rare that you see over 25k without the game just being over. Yeah, but again, it's it's just VP being methodical. Yeah, They're not in a situation where it's... Like, they, they don't need to, to force anything, right? The, the thing that kind of makes me think Hellraiser's lineup was actually a lot better than maybe even they gave it credit for was how close they were to actually winning that fight. If they killed the Void, they could have taken it. Yeah. And I think that just speaks volumes about how good their draft actually is. It was just VP, I think, having more experience, obviously playing together for longer. This Hellraiser squad's only been together for a few months. So we're going to be watching just the large number of Glaives bouncing between these two barracks. No real chance for them. Thank God they spread out the, uh, the shrines. Oh, there's the Chronosphere jump in. No one found his opening. And he's going to be able to take out the two supports. Instant buyback from the Keeper of Light, but no buyback available from the Earthshaker. Meanwhile, 33, he recognized that there was nothing they could do about top lane. So he's trying to push out bottom lane, but they caught the Chaos Knight. Oh no, what happened? Swift ending. How did you get caught outside of your own base? Now, as a result, Kaiser might die. Gets the Old Scepter off onto no one. But they're just going to go ahead and end it, not even worrying about getting Megas. They're going to go straight for the Tier 4s. Since 33 is just going to go and try and take lanes of Raxes. You want a base race? God, look at the Glaives, my lord. Four seconds stun. They're actually bringing no one pretty close to death here, but eat the cheese just in time. Again, Hellraiser is so close to being able to kill that damnable, faceless void, but he survives. And they'll finish up the throne. Oh, man. That was definitely a rough one for Hellraisers, but I think during some point in that game, Hellraisers started to not just feel the pressure, but they, they kind of doubted what they could do with their heroes at any point in the game. And they just fell into this kind of trap where they were trying to farm, but not really playing that effectively. At TI, it's very easy for teams to play to not lose. 
instead yeah. of play to win. And I think that's kind of what Hellraisers were doing, even though they had the heroes to, to make a comeback into the game. Sure, it's tough without the Shaker having a blink, but you got to go for a play. you got to try something. Because right. a team like Virtus Pro, who's been together for a good while, they have a great track record this year. If you don't take advantage of situations, they will every single time. Take courage, Hellraisers. You're going to need it for game number two versus Virtus Pro. We'll be back after a short break.